Excellent. Hello, everyone. This is Ken Quigley from Keystroke, and today we're going to be doing a webinar on Link to List, our newest online link scrubbing service. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things up front. As Vic has said a couple of times, um, we need to make sure that no one uses their webcam. I know this is uh, kind of a tedious uh, requirement, but it actually interferes with our recording and truncates our recording. So we ask once again, uh, if we see anyone, we'll, we'll try to stop it, but we're asking in advance that people uh, not use it, okay? Uh, the other thing is, all these events, uh, as I indicated, are recording. We want a clear uh, recording for everyone. Um, and I'm gonna show you where they're published. Okay, so this is our homepage, scroll down, and there's two links here that you need to note. One is upcoming events, okay, which is where we schedule all events like this. So you can always visit here and see what upcoming uh, events we've got. Like next week we're scheduling it. We have uh, Billy doing uh, Xavier training, okay? And here is where the recordings will be. So tomorrow we should have it right near the bottom here. Okay. Uh, qu a quick reminder to Jean-Marc, uh, turn your video camera off, please. Oh, there, I got you. Okay. Okay, so just, if you see it, just click the little uh, ellipses in the top right-hand corner of their tile, and then you'll see a stop webcam sharing. Okay. Um, and let's see, the last thing is uh, there's two places where you can read up about link to list on our website if you go here our programs linktivity products and then link to list and you can read about this here okay and then where we're going to start is the actual linktivity.net website okay so with that bit of housekeeping out of the way uh let's get started so in order to um uh, to begin with uh, any of the any of the linktivity products okay um, also going to ask that everyone keeps themselves muted, okay, unless they're a, a presenter, okay? So anyway, if you, uh, to start, you go to the linktivity.net website and you click on my account. Now you can obviously scroll down and read a little bit more about it. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize is as part of um, our, uh, our community needs to act, a fundraising event for all of the subscriptions that we get for any of our Linktivity products in the first quarter of this year, we're donating 50% of the revenue uh, to this cause. So please uh, click here and learn a little bit more about it. We're not doing any promotions like discounts through the first uh, three months of this year because we obviously want uh, to um, donate as much as possible, okay? So going up here, clicking on my account. Okay, now normally I'm just gonna click on log out because this automatically logged me in. You would get this screen. Now, just to kind of back up a little bit, I, I just wanna emphasize list scrubbing, there's nothing particularly new about a list scrubbing service. Um, they've been around for a long time. There's actually a number that, um, that are popular. You've probably heard of zero bounce, debounce, bounce list. And the one that uh, we'll be talking a bit about today is called Bright Verify or uh, validity.com. But regardless of which service you use though, ACT customers are invariably required to export their email list from ACT and then upload them to a scrubbing list like Bright, uh, Bright Verify. Okay, I'm actually just gonna go over here and show Bright Verify. Okay, upload the, the list here, have it scrubbed. And normally what they'll do is they'll create a, um, um, a new column on the right hand side indicating what the status of each one of the emails they verified and the, the status will be one of four things and i'll get into that later but it's basically it'll be uh, valid invalid unknown or accept all okay and you'll get that on the spreadsheet but when you get the spreadsheet back and you try to import it in you can often create a mess especially if you're not super familiar with it the average end user that are trying to do it themselves uh, can really make a mess and actually overwrite good field data Okay, so that's something that we're, you know, we obviously want to avoid. The other thing to consider is the consequences of an unscrubbed email list. Now, because, you know, everyone on this call has already seen the value of learning a little bit about unscrubbed lists, it's not, or uh, scrubbing their list is not something that I, I need to really make uh, a big effort to establish a use case for, but 
you know, we, we tend to understand, you know, a lot of bounces as contributing to a bad email uh, reputation. And the worse your, your, um, your reputation, the worse your delivery rates. But those tend to be, you know, rather kind of obscure and, and you know, not very immediate impact. They're like gradual impacts. But there are some things that have immediate impact. Okay, and if you're using things like uh, act marketing automation or really any ESP, one of the unknown facts is that the maximum bounce rate that's typically uh, considered acceptable by them is only 5%. So that means you've got to have a 95% accuracy rate or higher. Okay, and Bright Verify um, says that their average uh, improvement is a 98% improvement in uh, valid emails. Okay, so consider that. Now, again, that's kind of obscure. So let's actually look at some recent stats that I've got. Now, here is the Act Marketing Automation screen that we got from the, the campaign that actually attracted all of you folks to this webinar. Okay, so we sent it out to 1,400 people. Okay, we've got a 1.57% bounce rate. Okay, we use validity. That's extremely good. Okay. Now you're probably thinking, well, 1,400. How you know that's not a big sample. That isn't something that um, you know maybe some of the people on this call are using a much bigger list. Well, let's take a look at another campaign that we ran on Tuesday uh, with our Act Pro campaign. Wrong direction. Okay. So here is almost 15,000 records. Okay. And our bounce rate is still below two. Because every single one, one of the requirements of the group that I marketed to was that they have valid under their email status field. Okay. So I just wanted to put that, you know, in real life terms and what that looks like. If this is over five, okay, what will happen is that you're going to get um, a notice from Swift Page. And typically what that is that they'll 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 give you uh, the first warning and then the, the next one. Uh, could come with a suspension notice where you're actually not able to use the account that you paid for, okay? And what happens is you have to then show that you've you've you know made these efforts to scrub your list and you you've got it under control. And if you do it again after that, they can actually terminate your account without a refund. And don't think that that this is unique to uh, SwiftPage. This actually applies to many ESPs. So there is a reason why we take this so seriously and why we have several services available for this. So I'm just to get that out of the way. Okay, and it's funny, uh, Billy, who will be doing the uh, the presentation on Bright Verify and how to set up a Bright Verify account after this, used to work for SwiftPage and used to be one of the guys that would send out those threatening notices and that we would have to appeal to on behalf of our customers. So this is you know kind of a real life case that certainly Billy and I are very very familiar with. Anyway, needless to say. When you use, uh, when you see how easy it is to use link to list and how well it works, you will not leave your email list to chance. So let's get into that. Okay. So first of all, what is link to list? Link to list is the latest product in our Linktivity family of products. And you can see link to calendar, link to events, link to forms. Here's link to list and um, the soon to be uh, released link to quotes. Okay. Um, and what it does is simple. It integrates with ACT with Bright Verify, which I showed you, through what's called the Act Web API to validate the emails that you have in a chosen contact group. So it doesn't go to your entire database. It, you actually have to select the group. And, if, and that's, of course, very, very important for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is um, you know, cost containment. I'll get into uh, that later. So it checks each email within that group and updates the email status field and uh, with a value indicating, as I said, either valid, invalid, unknown, or accept all. And just so everyone understands, accept all is used by many um, uh, many domains where they'll have like a wild card, where anything at domain.com, um, just so that they, you know, if someone misspells a uh, an employee or uses service instead of support, that it won't bounce. So it's meant to catch everything. Okay. Um, Anyway, now because link to list leverages the, the web API to access and write to the database, this service, um, and this is very important detail, this service can only be used by ACT subscribers because the ACT web API 
is a subscription benefit and most everyone on this call, the only people, the 1400 people were all act subscribers. Okay. It can only be used by web subscribers. If you have any issues uh, using it, then just check under your security permissions that you have the web API permission enabled. This is a, a pretty simple thing. Admins and I believe uh, managers, and, and Billy, you can correct me on that, automatically have web API permissions, but the standard users have to be assigned it. They're, it's not by default, okay? Now, if for some reason that you, you're you attending this call um, by referral or something and, and uh, you're not a subscriber, we do have, I'm just gonna show you here. Okay. Here's we have opt-in manager and link to list. So you can learn a little bit about opt-in manager. Uh, even go here. Okay, and this works with what's called the SDK or the software development kit. And it will work with a local database. Okay, it's not going to work with the SDK or won't work with the API. It will work with a local database. So if, you, if you're a pro user or an off plan premium user, then this is something you need to look at. It's a little bit more expensive. It's $10 a month as opposed to $5 a month, but it also does a little bit more. But for the list scrubbing services, you know, we're going to be focusing on link to list today because we've priced it to do, um, you know, specifically email validation and kept the cost down accordingly. Okay. Now let's uh, speak about the uh, the costs. Now, Linktivity, as I'll show you here, the link to list is very inexpensive. Five dollars a month uh, billed annually, so sixty dollars. And the nice thing is, you do not need more than one. You don't need one per user. You can use uh, have one person sign up and validate as many of the contacts in uh, on your team's list as you like. So that's a pretty small cost when you consider um, how much time it's going to save you. Okay, now to put that in, the, oh, and the, the other thing is the Bright Verify cost. We do not mark up the Bright Verify. We haven't structured this service to resell it. So you will set up uh, an account directly with Bright Verify and Billy's gonna show you how to do that. But the cost for them is one cent per contact. Okay, now, as I said, let's put this in perspective. Here is the big marketing list, okay? Almost 15,000 records here. For me to validate this, okay, 15,000 records, that would be less than $150, okay? The $60 is fixed once a year, but to get that many would be less than $150. Think about the comparable time it would take to validate that many run the risk of exporting, importing, making a mess of your database. Uh, very, very small cost, okay? And as I said, when we're done, Billy's gonna do a short demo on how that works, okay? So we're gonna go to back here, go to Linktivity. Um, great to have you back. Gonna click on Login. And I'm going to click on, let me just close this over here. I'm going to click on, see all the different services here. First thing we're going to start with is the API settings. Now, you have to set up the API settings because you have to establish a connection to your database. Okay, so here is the web API URL. Now, some people may not know how, you know, to get their web API. Um, their web API. I'm going to show you, uh, Billy, what I'm going to actually ask you to do is, um, after your presentation, show where you've got that recording for the Act Connect so people can set up uh, their own, okay? And that's under the uh, keystroke.ca forward slash connections link, okay? So keystroke.ca forward slash connections. So anyway, here's your, your web API. Um, if you have any questions about where, um, you know, if you're hosted with us, what your web API is, let me just show you a quick trick. Go here for Act Services, go down to Keystroke Customer Tools, I missed here, and go down to Web API List. Okay, and this will show you all the different web API addresses, okay, that are available for our hosting customers in uh, across North, uh, North America. Okay, so again, here's your address. You type in your um, your database name, it's not case sensitive. You type in your username, not case sensitive. And then you type in your password. Now, the first time you pass, you type it in, you click on save and then you click on connect. You have to click on save and the moment that you save it, uh, it's not gonna be visible anymore, okay? So mine's already saved, click on uh, connect and it will do a quick connection uh, test to your uh, to the API, okay? 
connected to the API uh, server successfully. Then let's go to the general Zen. Oh, that, that's pretty much it for the API, very simple. Okay, then under the general settings, what we've done is we've tried to simplify this so that there isn't duplication of, of effort and data entry throughout the website. So little things like what's your name, how do you want to appear on the different services, uh, what's your primary email address? Well, several of our email, several of our Linktivity services use ICS files, okay, distribute ICS files, whether it's linked to events or linked to calendar. And anytime you have an ICS file, you have to have a source email so that um, when someone downloads that ICS, Yes, they know with whom they have that uh, meeting. Okay, and then the next one is uh, setting up a image. Now, uh, like many of our services, you can have the default image, or you can assign uh, images specifically to different events. And then the uh, calendar settings: what time zone are you in, and what uh, date format you've got. Then we have manage subscriptions. Now, because um, you know my I have the uh, manager account settings, I'm going to see a couple of things up here that you won't. Okay, um, but if you want to add a new subscription, all you do is you select, this is what it would look like. Now, the nice thing is that if you're a member of a team, if you're the administrator, then what you do is you set this up so that you've got, um, you know, you'll do all the purchasing and all the renewing for your entire team. So instead of having five or six people all managing it, you can do one at a time. So let's say you're doing this for the first time, you've set up a trial and you wanna set up five people with, let's say a link to calendar account. Okay, you click on add new subscriptions. Okay, now because I'm listed as a reseller, it's automatically giving me a discount, but here it is where you can set as, purchase as many as you like, okay, as you need for your team. And then you click on checkout with PayPal. Now, the reason we use PayPal is that we have customers on both sides of the border in North America and across uh, Europe. And some of the Canadian uh, payment providers actually get tripped up with international orders and, and PayPal has always been safest. But let me assure that if you, you do not need a PayPal account to actually uh, transact and purchase one, it will actually give you the option to just process a credit card as a guest. So rest assured, we're not asking anyone to set up a PayPal account. Um, the PayPal charges a little bit more, but uh, we get fewer uh, issues with uh, international orders, okay? And then what you do is once you, you, uh, you will see, let's say you bought three, you would end up with three unassigned subscriptions, and then you click on assign, and you assign them to your team. Now, if you have a team member that needs one of these things, they have to sign up for a trial first. So let's say that I want to set one up for my wife and let's say I misspell her name, it's Z-D-E-N-A. If I try to apply to an invalid account that doesn't exist, it actually will tell me it, I can't do it. But if I try to do it to the valid one, it will apply it, okay? So now you can see that it's applied here. Now, one other quick tip is be sure to, um, to not buy like an inventory of them, buy them as you need them. So if you've got five, five or six people that need them, then buy five or six. But if you anticipate that someone's gonna need one in like a month or two months, don't buy it until then because the time will tick down. Okay, so you'll actually be paying for time that you're not using, okay? Now, um, it's important to note, getting back to the API, if you, one of the benefits of, of working through the API is that you can work with a local database, you can work with a, uh, a hosted database like the list that I showed you, or you can even use the new um, ACT theorem SAS, okay? Now, a, one of the issues that people have had with, um, with SAS is knowing how to uh, ascertain what their API is. So what we've done is we have built this little utility at uh, sasapi.kqc.ca, and you put in your credentials, so your username, which is typically your email, your password, and then your database name. And then once you once you enter that in, uh, and you click on submit, it will actually display your exact API. So that's a useful tool. If for any reason you're having problems registering um, on the setup what your API uh, address is, then here's a little test ut utility called testapi.kqc.ca, and the same thing. You put in your username, password, database name, and URL, and that way you can test whether or not um, those credentials are valid and do connect before getting frustrated with the service, because if it works here, it will work with our service.
okay? So covering that. So now we're uh, we're at the manage subscriptions. We've signed everyone. Now let's get over to the link to list settings. Okay, link to list. Okay, so link to list here. This is basically what it looks like. It's actually you're going to be amazed once we go through it how simple the interface is. So here is a list of um, of scans that I've already created. I did a demo last week for some resellers. So this is one I did. And then I've set up a one for a new SaaS trials. So each person that signs up for a new SaaS, it automatically schedules them. But I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set it up. First thing though, we gotta to go to settings. Now it always takes like, maybe 10, 15 seconds, because it's connecting to your database at this point. Now, as I said, Billy's gonna show you um, how to get your Bright Verify um, API key, and when you get it, you just paste it in here, okay? The second thing is the email status field, because I remember I, I said that, you know, with a spreadsheet, it just automatically creates that, that extra column on the right and puts in those values. Well, with a database, you actually have to have that field in your database. So You've got the option of either selecting a field that you've already created or to create the field. And by default, it will create a field called email address status and it will create that drop down of those four options. Now, some really cool news is that the API actually will create fields in databases like the second tier of SAS that doesn't even have field creation um, permissions. So, one of the things with the uh, the second tier, which is the the standard tier, you're not able, you're only able to repurpose existing fields. Okay, you can't create new ones. Well, the API actually bypasses that, so you can actually create a field even if you're in the first or second tier. Okay, obviously in the third tier it will work because those permissions are supported. Then you click on save, and you go back to the screen. Okay, now as I said, we've got all of our email um, scan list here. Um, the options over here are very, very straightforward. Edit list, delete list, and the little run icon, so which actually will run it. But what we're gonna do is we're actually going to make a new list from scratch. Now, as I said, it works with groups. And um, I also said that because it's using the API, it's going directly to the master database. So I'm gonna bring over on my screen here. So what you guys can see is our production database. And you can see the, the test group for link to list, okay? And what you can see is there's 136 contacts. Now, this group is comprised of people that are in a certain area code, have an email address, and don't have anything in the email status field. So when we're done, if it populates everything, this group should be empty, okay? So let's, now we've got that. So I'm gonna click on new email list. Now, when you give this a name, it has app, this is only something that has to make sense to you. You do not have to, to you know, mirror the name of the group, whatever makes sense to you. So I'm actually going to say um, link to list public demo, okay? And then because I've already connected via the API, I've got access to my groups. Now I want to just type in, and the, as I type in the first couple of letters, it immediately filters, so that saves a ton of time. And here I've got the two things I need, okay? I've got the name that I've assigned it, that makes sense to me. And obviously there's an asterisk here, it's required. And then I've got the assigned group, and I'm gonna click on create list. Okay, now let's take a look at the options. So. Because this is a subscription service, okay, um, one of the things that, that we've obviously discovered in this last very unique year is that emails that were previously, you know, perfectly good, okay, and verified over and over again due to historic job losses, we're finding that, you know, even though you saw that we had um, a percentage, like a bounce percentage that was under two in both cases, um, that's actually high for us. And it's only because we've had a lot of people, um, our customers or our contacts, that their, their emails are no longer valid due to people losing jobs or companies closing down. So for us, we've set up this, this service where you can actually set up a group and have it scan on a scheduled basis. Uh, either 
you can set up as uh, none where it's just a one-off, set up as a daily, that's pretty aggressive, um, but may not be if you're, you're creating a dynamic group of new contacts added to the database. So maybe on a daily basis, every single night, it's gonna scan um, the contacts and make sure their emails are verified. Uh, weekly could be something for, you know, a little bit less urgent, and then monthly could be more of a maintenance uh, issue. Now, here, verify previously verified contacts. This is cleared by default. Now, just keep in mind that if you've got a list of, say, thousands and thousands, and you've already verified them, you don't want to be paying over and over and over again to Bright Verify to verify them every month or every year. Okay, or not every year, every month or every week, because that could be excessive. But you might want to do a complete scan of your database once a year. And let's say you've got 14,000 contacts, that's $140 a year. That's not that much compared to the costs of getting your account suspended or, or even canceled outright. Okay, so now I'm going to click on save and we're actually going to run it. So we click on uh, run verif uh, verified list now. And it's automatically going to pop up. It's going to it's going to prompt you to do it again because you know this is obviously going to have a cost associated with it with Bright Verify. And I'm going to click on Verify now. Okay. Now what it's going to do? It's actually going to display as it's running the results for each and every single contact. And what we've seen though is that there's typically a pause of around 20 to 30 seconds at the beginning, and then it kind of jumps through the list. So um, you'll see like there will be this pause that looks like it's not doing anything and all of a sudden you'll see 30 or 60 done and it will continue on. Because this our group only has 136, uh, this won't take um, terribly long. And then when it's done, up will pop the screen. Now, as I said, the nice thing is because this is working with the web API, it's updating the master database. So um, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your marketing groups Okay, all have a condition in there, a dynamic condition that says email status field must contain uh, or must equal valid. Okay, I'm not crazy about the fact that they use valid and invalid because if you put contains valid, it will capture both. So make sure that you've got a group that says must contain or must equal, um, not equal, or not contains, but must equal. Okay, and that means it's an exact hit. Okay, so as you can see, it's jumping through the list now, we're at 48, and you can see here, it's going through, and you can see results for each. Okay, valid, invalid, okay, and it's marking each one. Okay, and we're at 60, and so we're at about like one, uh, one a second. Okay, so we should be done a list of around 136 um, in just over two minutes. Um, so while we're waiting, this is a good time to pause and see if there's any questions, Vic. No, there's nothing in the chat. So please either focus in the chat or if you can unmute yourself, uh, you can do that, please. Okay, no questions? Okay. No questions. So, so as you can see, this, this is pretty easy to use. There's no software to install. There's no uh, data to export and import and massage and do anything. There's no risk of, of anything getting lost. And, and one of the other things that people are always asking is like, what happens uh, to the actual email field? See, we're at 120. Nothing happens to the email field. Even if an if email field is deemed to be invalid, that the data in the email field is never touched. Only thing that is updated in the database is the email status field. So you'll get one of those four results that we discussed. Okay, so that's always important to note. Now, now we're done. Okay, so this list has been processed successfully. You can view the results uh, in ACT or log onto this page, press the back button. Okay, now, as we can see, we've got results for every single one. So now, let's go over here. And let's see how many it did. So I'm just going to go here. See, the group is empty. Okay, because one of the conditions of the group was that the email status field had to be um, had to be empty for it to get into this group. It scanned the whole um, 136. It updated them all, and now they're going into the appropriate groups. Okay, uh, Mike Perry okay. asks, um, yeah. and charges only one cent per. So that um, you know. Basically, uh, 136 would cost you a buck 36. Okay. 
okay? Which I think you'll agree is not only from a time-saving perspective, but can you imagine any other way of doing that? Even if you're trying to export and import such a small subset, that's two minutes worth of work, okay? Um, and so Mike says, not sure I heard exactly. If one contact has three email addresses, okay, very good, thank you. So what Mike is asking is if you have uh, three email fields, uh, we've designed this so it only scans the primary one, okay? Um, most of the time, most of the e-marketing the e services will only go to the primary email services. So, you know, we've we've designed it so that it, it only scans it uh, to the one and uh, to that one primary email address. Uh, we can look at, at expanding that service, but honestly, we've had more questions than demand for it, okay? Uh, just because most people use the primary email address for uh, their e-marketing, okay? So hopefully that helps. Okay, so getting back, you can see how quickly that worked. And now, like I said, everything is done. The settings were saved. All, and if I want, if I click on save and close, and let's say even if I don't wanna schedule it, okay? Let's just say that once a month, I wanna check to see if there's anyone in that group. I can go in here, um, click on this group, or just click on verify list. And it will automatically uh, run up this screen again, and um, I can uh, run it again. Okay, so I can either do it on a schedule or on a PRN basis. So let me ask one more time if there's any questions. And if not, oh, hold uh, on. There, there's one more. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Thomas. Um, Thomas is saying he likes what he sees here. So the um, at this point, I want to um, pass it over to Billy because the one thing we kind of rush past is how to get the API key. And you know, when any, anytime you talk about getting an API key, there's a certain bit of obscurity to it. But Billy's done this a few times and he's created a video which will also show you where you can find it. And so uh, if you can just make him the presenter. Yeah, Billy, go ahead. All right, so you guys yeah. should see the yeah. Validity yeah. website right now. Yeah. Excellent. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Validity. I'm gonna be pretty brief with this. But Validity is a data management company. So they've got several products for data management and we've decided to, to leverage the Bright Verify product to do all of our email verifications. So the first thing you have to do when you're gonna set up link to list is you're gonna come in here and you'll need to grab that API key, but how do you get one of those? Um, well, here's how. You head over to the validity.com website, you go up to their product section and you'll see each one of their products listed there. If the site will work for me, there we go. And you click Bright Verify. All the information on Bright Verify is right here on the page, so you can feel free to thumb through this. But where we're going to be focusing right now is how to sign up for an account, and they kind of hid this away. So if you click Sign In, at the very bottom there is a link for Sign Up. It's a little difficult to find. It took me a few tries before I found out where it was. Now, once you click Sign Up, it's going to ask you, you know, basic information about your account. Uh, your full name, your company name. And this is uh, kind of something that stumbled me for a minute. Uh, it wants a business email address. You can't use a Yahoo address or a Hotmail or AOL, uh, not even a Gmail account. It wants a business email address. And that means like your domain is classified as a business and they're able to find that very easily. Um, for me, whenever I signed up using my keystroke email, it didn't delay me at all getting everything set up. At that point, it pushed everything through. So since I only have the one email address, uh, I can't really show you much more on this, except for the next page, after you filled out all this information, it asks you for your payment uh, information. Now, that payment information is linked directly into your account. And once you put that in here, you'll be greeted by this screen right here. This is your main uh, uh, Bright Verify screen. And on the left-hand side, you'll immediately see where it says, API keys, and clicking on this at the bottom, you'll find an API key. This is tied directly to your account, and this is what enables Link to List to send uh, those email addresses straight over there, and um, uh, to, for verification is how it responds back, plus it also is how it uh, links to your billing information to charge you. Now, um, Ken also asked me to show you one other thing. Oh, and if, actually, there's a, if you ever have any questions, um, you can actually view all of your pricing and everything and your usage directly on this website once you go in. Uh, I haven't 
done anything myself, but you can see all of your invoices and everything while you're here. But Ken also wanted me to show you the connections page. So if you head over to keystroke.ca slash connections, this is gonna pull up kind of a, a quick page for all of your questions regarding, you know, what is Act Connect Link? What is an API? Because we we keep saying API, but I haven't really defined it. That is defined on this page. Um, it also uh, will link you down to all of our testing sites so you can test and try to get your API uh, URL, which is one of the questions that it will ask you. Um, so feel free to head over to uh, keystroke.ca slash connections come straight through here for everything. At the very bottom, you're also gonna see these. These are three useful tools, including how to find your uh, API address with the SAS account, the Axiom SAS, how to test and make sure that you've got everything correct. Uh, and then if you're hosted through us, we have our entire list of API addresses. So you can very easily reference that and get going with uh, link to list. Can you show them the, AP, the API video that you did on how to set up uh, Connect? Uh, is that one on this page? I was looking for it earlier. I believe it is. Um, I'm not actually seeing it here. Um, oh, there's there's using well, that connect yeah. link is listed right here. Yeah, and it's also getting started with that connect link, which All right. I, um, the Swift page did there. Yeah. So, and this is the bottom area. And if you have any problems with that connect link, there's my troubleshooting video right here. So. This will kind of get you from broken to working no matter what without having to call support. And the nice thing is about Act Connect is you don't have to worry about getting a, an SSL certificate or anything like that. It does all of that for you. Um, and it's it's been pretty stable. So it's something that um, that Swift page partnered with a company called Cloud Elements, and it's a very, very solid service. Um, you know, Billy actually was was a big proponent of it before. Uh, not that he isn't now, but it, it was one of the things that, that certainly made his job easier back then, okay? Um, I do wanna respond, thanks Billy. I wanted to respond to a question that we've got. Uh, a gentleman named John uh, expressed concern about uploading email addresses to the third party. And, and that's, that's you know, not um, you know, a bad concern when you're basically handing over your entire contact list um, you know, what assurances do you have that it won't be seen by any other third parties or won't be shared? Um, now, obviously, if I was running a service like Bright Verify, I would want to assure people that, you know, in order to stay in business, we wouldn't do that. But just to kind of reassure you, when you're using a service like Link to List, you're not handing over the list, okay? You're basically setting up an API connection between your database and their verification services. At no point are you turning over your database list. It's just, it's a quick connection and nothing is being uploaded to them whatsoever. So if that's something that you are concerned with, um, then absolutely, okay? Um, uh, Jean uh, asked a question, does Orange Care cover the help with setting up all of these things? If you are an Orange Care subscriber, we can absolutely help you with it. But, you know, like I said, this is something that, you, know, you saw how quickly it was to set up, very, very quick, okay? So we can definitely help you with this, but I think once we give you the information, which is basically the API um, for a hosted customer or how to set it up, um, it's it's very easy uh, to get done. And then, you know, most of the, the tough stuff, which is like the API, the credentials and things like that, that's done the first time around and you can scan ongoing after that, okay? Now, uh, John asks, where is the email status field? This is a very, very good question. Just because it, um, the, our service creates that, that email status field does not mean that you're gonna suddenly see it because we can't modify your layout. So we'll create the database, okay? Or we'll create the, the database field, but we can't surface it on your layout. You will have to add that to the layout. Now, keep in mind that you will still see that, that field in list view, okay? So just to kind of bring this around, Okay, if you go to our contacts and you can see it in list view, if you select the email status field, you'll see it here. You don't need it in the layout, okay? Um, but if you wanna add it to the layout, that it will be something that you automatically have to um, modify. But uh, you don't need to see it in the layout in terms of, of modifying your dynamically populated group to include only contacts with, um, you know, equals valid, okay? Or equals accept all. So it's a good question because I, I forgot to mention that it will not add it to the layout. So some people will, you know, uh, create the field and then say, where is it? And that you have to manually add, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, 
Uh, James, yep, my apologies. James said that um, my, I wasn't the one sharing my screen, so let me try that again. Okay, thank you, James. So again, here is where you don't need to add it to the layout to see it in list view. You can see here uh, the email status field, but if you wanted to add it to the actual layout, you would have to put it here, okay? So, but as I said, within the groups, um, you just need to add that as part of the dynamic query that's in your, um, um, in your group, okay? And that pretty much covers what I wanted. I just wanted to go back here, uh, go back to the homepage, show where we'll be posting here, the keystroke training videos. Okay, um, and then you will see here, Act Connect Setup video. Now, every time you click on one of these, it pops up. Okay. And you could just, uh, I actually have to make sure that there's a setup for that. Okay, and then um, Bright Verified this, if you um, came in late or you missed Billy's presentation, click on that and we'll begin your video there. Okay, and tomorrow we'll have this posted here, uh, today's webinar. So if you're interested, what I'm gonna ask you to do is go back into the um, linktivity.net, set up a trial here, okay, and um, sign up here, set up for a trial. Now with link to list, it's only going to allow you up to uh, 10 verifications before that ends your trial. Obviously, if we allowed people to do it all at once, then, um, then no one would sign up because they would just take care of all their scanning up front. Okay, yeah. so it's, it's bottled, a bottleneck for that, yes. Okay, Ken, there's one more question there. Is there uh, savings by using linked list instead of going directly to verify? Um, well, we don't mark up Bright Verify, right? So um, we're not reselling their service. We thought about that just from a simple, um, you know, simplicity standpoint. But you don't get savings with Bright Verify until you, I think, get Billy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you need like 250,000 um, uh, email accounts to check before you get any kind. Of, and then it goes from like one cent down to like point eight of a cent. So yeah, there's no correct. yeah, there's no savings to going through us. Um and nor, you know, if you went you, you have to go directly because we didn't want to get in the way and, and um you know create it because if we have to get involved, obviously we have to mark up to cover uh the maintenance of that. So that's we've set it up so that you can you pay sixty dollars to us and then um anything else is your you know is based on your consumption. Okay, good question. Thanks John. Okay, so if there is nothing else, guys, um, as I said, just set this up by a subscription, uh, $60. I think it goes without saying that this is a really easy time saver. And when you consider the consequences of working with an unscrubbed list, um, it's, it's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble as well. Okay, so with that, we'll bring it to an end, let you guys get back to your day. Thank you very much, and uh, hope you enjoyed your time. Take care.